Welcome to our final video on cost estimation and cost behavior. In this video, we will be looking at some more advanced issues and calculations with regards to the learning curve. In our previous video, we looked at what the learning curve is all about. We also performed calculations using the cumulative doubling method and the graphical method. Neither of these methods were particularly useful, as for the cumulative doubling method, your production needed to be at a doubling point. For the graphical method, you needed to use another method, either the cumulative doubling or mathematical methods, in order to calculate the various points on the curve before you could draw it. In this video, we will be looking at our final method being the mathematical approach. The mathematical approach is useful as we can use it to calculate the average time at any activity level. It does not have to be a doubling point. Because we can now calculate the average time for any number of units, we will also perform some more complex calculations to calculate the incremental time for specific units. The mathematical model expresses the learning curve in the format of yx is equal to ax to the power of b. Here, yx represents the cumulative average time to produce x number of units, where x is the number of units or batches we are interested in. A represents the time required to produce the first unit. Finally, B represents the log of the learning rate to the base of 2. This can be calculated in two ways. If you have a calculator, such as mine that has pictures on screen, that allows you to specify the base, then you can just use that. Alternatively, if you don't have such a calculator, you can take the log of the learning rate and divide it by the log of 2. It is important here to remember that we need to enter the learning rate as a decimal rather than as a percentage. Let us try this out using an example. We are going to use the same example that we used under the cumulative doubling and graphical approaches. Again, we have Maxwell Pillay taking 30 hours to assemble the first widget. There is a 90% learning rate and we are required to prepare a table showing the effects of the learning curve up to the 8th unit. Looking at the table, notice a key difference here. When I am working with a mathematical model, I am not limited to doubling points only. Rather, I can calculate every point up to the 8th unit, even if it is not a doubling point. In addition, because I am using a formula of yx is equal to ax to the power of b, I can calculate any point in any order. I can calculate the average time for the first 7 units without having to worry about first calculating the average time for the second, third and so forth in order. So let us have a look at how this works in detail for the first 7 units and then go through the rest a bit faster. Remember our formula is yx is equal to ax to the power of b. We are trying to calculate yx. So we need the values of a x and b. A represents the time for the first unit. We see that it took Maxwell 30 hours, therefore A is equal to 30 hours. We are trying to calculate the average time for the first 7 units, so x would be equal to 7. Finally, B is the log of the learning curve to the base of 2. We know that the learning curve is 90%. We need to put this in as a decimal of 0.9. We can now enter this into our calculator and get an answer of 22.32 hours. Note that I have rounded off here, but you don't have to. Our total time for the first 7 units is now simply the 22.32 hours multiplied by 7 to get 156.24 hours. Take a moment now to pause this video and calculate the rest of the unit average and total times. Now that you have taken some time to solve this question for yourself, let us go through it together. So if we do it for one unit, we get an average time of 30 hours and a total time of 30 hours. This is expected as it is the first unit. For the second unit, we get an average time of 27 hours and a total time of 54 hours. Notice that this is the same that we got under the cumulative doubling method. Now we were unable to calculate the times for the third unit under the cumulative doubling approach. 
We can, however, do it under the mathematical method. For the first three methods, we get an average time of 25.39 hours and a total time of 76.17 hours. For the fourth unit, we get an average time of 24.3 hours and a total time of 97.2 hours. Again, this is the same that we got under the cumulative doubling method. Now points 5, 6 and 7, we again could not calculate under the cumulative doubling method. We can, however, do them under the mathematical method. For the first five units, we get an average time of 23.49 hours and a total time of 117.45 hours. For the first six units, we get an average time of 22.85 hours and a total time of 137.1 hours. Finally, for the first eight units, we get an average time of 21.87 hours and a total time of 174.96 hours. Again, this is the same as we got under the cumulative doubling method. Now the major benefits of the mathematical model is that we can calculate the average time for any number of units and we are not limited to the doubling points. Also, it is more efficient as we can calculate any point independently. This therefore allows us to be able to calculate the time taken for specific individual units. Let us look at the example on screen. Again, we are looking at Maxwell Pillay who assembles widgets. However, this time they are asking us to calculate the time taken for the 10th unit. Notice they are not asking us for the average time of the first 10 units or the total time of the first 10 units. They are specifically asking for the time of the 10th unit by itself. Now pause this video and give this question a try. See if you can solve it before we go through it together. Okay, great. Now that you have taken some time to solve this question for yourself, let us go through it together. We can't use the formula to calculate the incremental time of the 10th unit directly. We can, however, use this formula to calculate the average time to produce the first 10 units. And by multiplying that number by 10, we can calculate the total time for the first 10 units. If we then calculate the total time for the first 9 units, the difference between the total time for the first 9 units and the total time for the first 10 units should reflect the incremental time for the 10th unit by itself. Let us try this out. So, we can start off by using the formula yx is equal to ax to the power of b to calculate the average time for the first 10 units. If we do this, we get an answer of 21.14 hours. Now, this is not the answer. Remember, this is the average time for the first 10 units. We are looking for the incremental time of the 10th unit specifically. So we multiply the 21.14 hours by 10 to get the total time of the first 10 units of 211.4 hours. Now we can do the same for the first 9 units. We start by calculating the average time to produce the first 9 units, which works out to be 21.48 hours. We multiply this by 9 to get the total time for the first 9 units of 193.32 hours. Now the difference between the total time for the first 9 units and the total time for the first 10 units must be the time taken for the 10th unit by itself. Therefore, the incremental time of the 10th unit should be the difference between these two total times. We can calculate that as 18.08 hours. This brings us to the end of our series on cost estimation and cost behavior. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned a lot. We will see you in our next series.